Good evening. This is James Nussbaumer, and I am the author of The Master of Everything, a story of mankind and the world of illusion we call life. And I really like to say that it is an inspirational and a spiritual manifesto to a better life. Um, on sale now, everywhere books are sold. I'm so proud of this book. I hope you'll get a copy of it and join the momentum, as I always say, because the momentum is building and I would love to have you a part of the momentum. The master of everything, please get a copy. It helps redirect the mental power of our mistakes into positive results. And I want to go on to say that um, I get, you know, I get so many messages on Facebook. It's unbelievable. And they're all so nice, so nice. Um, many people want to know what my journey was like. Uh, a lot of people know that, you know, I spent eight years in a state penitentiary for a foolish securities violation. But what was going on through my mind? How did I get through it? And, and could I um, expand on a little bit just about where my mind was at? as far as maintaining inner peace within myself as this was all going down. Well, you know, a journey to inner peace and freedom really is what I had to think about. But think about it this way. Isn't the whole goal of a healthy state of mind to leverage it for how we project our individual worlds? I mean that, you know, some might say for survival, Others might say for success or inner peace and freedom, but all I can tell you is at age 50, <laughs> I became prisoner of the state of Ohio for a foolish securities violation. As a financial advisor, I had made this mistake after 25 years in the financial services industry, a career that I loathed and often would scold myself and say, what are you doing in this business? But all of a sudden the years went by and 25 years had gone by and, I, and I'm sure you can understand how that goes. But there, then after all this went down, an example setter judge, an example setter judge wanted to make an example out of me, showed, showed me that, that the next financial advisor was gonna think twice as he pointed the finger at me saying, the next financial advisor is going to think twice before they do what you do. So, you know, the judge told me that I should have known better. And he was right. I should have known better. But he slammed the gavel hard to 10 years in a state prison. I must add that anything that could have went wrong or go against me certainly did. But I was willing to put up with it because something inside of me was telling me that this has to be for a while anyway. Besides, I had no choice in the matter. As much pain as I was going through, a comforting and secure voice within me kept telling me that I was going somewhere and to simply hang on. On that cold morning of February 1st, 2007, I was transported in chains to Lorraine Correctional Institution. I felt as though I was so weak, I was exhausted and uncertain as ever before in my life, but I hadn't lost sense of the promising thoughts and expansive vision of light at the end of the tunnel. It was kind of like that I had been jolted, something that jolted me during my stay in the county jail while I was waiting to go to prison. See, you see at Lorraine prison once I got there, they would only hold me for reception and intake Pro, uh, kind of processing center for a period of time to do a security check on me and set a security level on me. And this would take three to nine months. But while I was assigned there and, and waited for a spot in the overcrowded uh, prison system, uh, that I, I would be there for longer than I expected. And it was just, it was in maximum security and it was just terrible, terrible. But in that year alone, the state had brought in around 30,000 new prisoners. And that's why my, my stay at the processing center or the reception intake center was so long is because of the system was just flooded with people going to prison for reasons that maybe a lot of them didn't need to be there. But for the time being, I would remain, like I'd said, in maximum security 
though I'd never been a violent a violent or posed or posed an escape risk. But what maximum security really meant was being locked in a cell 24-7 with another inmate, double occupancy, other than to shower twice a week and to march to the dining hall three times a day. Um, other than that, <clears throat> but after a buzz haircut, I can still re remember sitting in that chair <clears throat> with um, inmates who were barbers, inmates who had been in prison for a while, um, clipping down to the skin, the hair off of every new inmate that came in there. But after a buzz haircut and an issue of prison clothing, I was taken to prison house number four, where I would spend as, as the next few to several months, like I had said. And as I had watched the guard slide a huge key into this heavy, thick steel door to house number four, my thoughts of what prison prison must be like raced through me as I as I said to myself, well, this is it. The guard forewarned me to follow him directly to my cell without looking at another inmate or any of the other inmates around that were waiting to harass me, harass me, and uh, which is the norm when new inmates come in. But as he slowly swung open the vault type door, blasts, I mean, blasts of insanely loud noise just surged directly through me. I stepped into the prison house, which held about 260 prisoners, all double bunked into single cells, and I immediately noticed the high ceilings, which reminded me of an arena. The circular design featured two tiers called ranges that resembled a balcony and, and ran all around the outer walls. A three-bar railing separated the pit from the cells, lined up one after another, this was certainly a lion's den, and I could see immediately that in order to survive, I would have to decide, I'd really have to, to decide really quickly what kind of a lion I was going to have to be. This surely was not the place where the lion and the lamb were going to lie down together. A Course in Miracles states, every response the ego is Every response to the ego is a call to war, and war does deprive you of peace. Yet in this war, there is no opponent. This is the reinterpretation of reality that you must make to secure peace, and the only one you need ever make. Now, I'm going to repeat that again because that's very, very profound. A Course in Miracles states that every response that the ego, every response to the ego is a call to war and war does deprive you of peace. Yet in this war, there is no opponent. This is the reinterpretation of reality that you must make to secure peace, and the only one you need ever make." End of quote. After 60 days, I was notified I was being transferred to a medium security prison called Richland, which would only be about an hour's drive for my two adult daughters now to come visit their locked up father. But a few weeks later, on the morning of the transfer, as I described in detail in my book, the state changed their plans for me. <clears throat> Without notice, I was loaded onto an old rickety bus with about 50 other prisoners, handcuffed, shackled and chained interlocking arms with the with the inmate next to you on the bus we were all driven to belmont prison over three hours away in the opposite direction in southern ohio belmont had a nasty reputation for gang activity and and it carried the nickname gladiator school i tried to contain uh, my anger in my my helplessness and, and dread uh, and the shock that I was in, all of a sudden I'm going to this gladiator school, so to, so to speak, uh, place. When I arrived at Belmont, when I arrived at Belmont Penitentiary, it was not what I expected, but really what is in life. <clears throat> Belmont certainly lived up to its reputation with gangs and gladiators. On my first day there, I counted eight fights, serious blood battled fights, resulting in each inmate being taken to the hole. Unlike Lorraine, there were no cells in the regular holding quarters, but rather rows of double bunked beds 30 inches apart. Warehousing 272 prisoners 
to each house, squeezed tightly in the five rows. Belmont has eight of these prefabricated houses with 10 roofs, totaling approximately, approximately 2,400 prisoners. And all of them had one thing in mind, survival. Being a medium security level prison for approximately seven hours, most days prisoners are permitted to roam the prison yard, the gymnasium, and the library. But these hours of the day, with all eight of the houses being intermingled, with, th with this amount of, uh, the amount of inmates, it's a is a relentless test for one's survival, where friends seem to be few and far between. But no matter what, how down on your luck you appear to be, it's always a boost of security to know your divine friend is close by. <clears throat> Here's to your peaceful interstate. And I hope that you, when the chips are down, rely on that inner friend that is always there for you because he will get you through. I hope this made sense. Thanks for listening to me and God bless.